Example 4. Analyzing a curve using derivatives. Discuss the curve y equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed with respect to concavity, points of inflection, and local maxima and minima, and use this information to sketch the curve. Okay, so let's first write down what our function is. Okay, we can write this as y, which is equal to f of x which is equal to x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. So let's find the first derivative, and then we'll find the second derivative. So f prime of x is going to equal 4x cubed minus 12x squared. And then we're going to find the second derivative. And so the second derivative is going to equal 12x squared minus 24x. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to find the critical numbers. So we want to be able to find the critical numbers. Okay, and how do we do that? We let f prime of x equals 0. So we know that f prime of x is 4x cubed minus 12x squared, and we set that equal to 0. So now we can factor out a 4x squared, and then what's left is x minus 3. So we have 4x squared, which is equal to 0, or x minus 3, which is equal to 0. If we solve for x here, we're going to get x, which is equal to 0, or x minus, or x is equal to 3, excuse me. Okay, so now those are the critical numbers. So now what we want to do is we want to use the second derivative test okay and so we're gonna use that to evaluate the second derivative at those critical numbers Okay, so we know that in part three, we know that the second derivative, f prime, double prime of x, is 12x squared minus 24x. So we're going to find f double, or second derivative when x is zero. So we have 12 times zero squared minus 24 times zero, which is going to equal zero. Okay, and then we want to find f, or the second derivative of when x is 3. So this is 12 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3. And so we plug that in, that gives us 36. So this tells us that this is going to be greater than 0. Okay, so let's see what this tells us. So one thing from what we just got, okay, we know that um, from the first derivative at 3, we know it's a critical number, and that's equal to 0. And we just found out that the second derivative at 3 is greater than 0. So we can find, so there is a local minimum at 3. So we're going to plug in 3 into the function. So f of 3, and we're using step number 1, is going to be 3 to the 4th minus 4 times 3 cubed which is going to give us 27. So the local minimum is at 3 
and then 27. Okay. Now we also need to, so we check this and now we need to look at the second part here. Okay. So I'll just call that number seven. Okay. So we know that since we found F double prime of zero to equal zero. Okay. The second derivative test gives no information about the critical number because it gives us zero. So the second derivative test gives no information about critical number zero. Because if you look at this here, zero, okay, doesn't tell us whether it's greater than zero or whether it's less than zero. So it's not giving us a uh, information about that critical number. So in this case, we're going to use the first derivative test. Now let's go back down here and look at the first derivative test. It says, suppose it sees a critical number of a continuous function. If the derivative changes from positive to negative at C, then it has a local maximum. If it changes from negative to positive at C, then F has a local minimum. And if it does not change sign at C, then it has no local maximum or minimum. So what we're going to do is, going back to step number four, okay, we're going to use those critical numbers, okay, going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and we have a critical number at zero and we have a critical number at three. Okay, and then we're going to quickly evaluate this. So here we have our regions, right? We have region one, region two, and then region three. Okay, so what is happening in the interval between negative infinity to zero? Well, okay, let's go ahead and figure out what's happening in this interval and then this interval and then this interval. Okay, so if we take a look at region number one, right, and we pick, let's say, x equals negative one, then we're gonna plug it into that derivative function. So we're gonna take um, f prime of negative one, and so that's gonna be four times negative one cubed, minus 12 times negative 1 squared. So we get negative 4 minus 12, which gives us negative 16. So we know it's negative in the first region. If we go to the second region, we can pick x to be 1. So now we're going to find f prime of 1. So that's going to be 4 times 1 cubed minus 12 times 1 squared. So that's going to give us 4 minus 12, which gives us negative 8. So we know it's negative in region number 2. We can stop here because we're only looking at 0 for our critical number. And if you look, okay, it tells us here in part C that if it doesn't change sign at C, then F has no mac local maximum or minimum at C. So therefore, we can say that for that critical value, or that critical number, okay, we can say that it has um, no local max or minimum at zero. Okay, now what we want to do is we now want to take a look at, say, step eight. Okay, and so we know that if we take a look at the second derivative, right? If we look at the second derivative function, 12x squared minus 24x. 
okay, what we want to be able to do is we want to determine, okay, what's happening here. So we want to set that equal to zero. So we're going to take 12x squared minus 24x, and we're going to set that equal to zero. So if we factor out a 12x, then what's left is x minus 2, which is equal to zero. So we have 12x, which is equal to zero, or x minus 2, which is equal to zero. So we get x, which is equal to zero, or x is equal to two. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we wanna check for concavity. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a number line, and then now we're gonna use zero and two, okay, as our points here, so we have zero and two. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to determine whether um, it is concave up or concave down. So let's take a look at our regions. We have region 1, region 2, and then region 3. Okay, so let's pick a value in region number 1. So we're going to pick negative 1. So for region number 1, we're going to let x equal negative 1, and we're going to plug it into the second derivative. So we get 12. times negative one squared minus 24 times negative one. Well, that's gonna give us positive 12 plus 24. So that gives us 36. So we know that's greater than zero. So that tells us that F double prime of negative one is greater than zero. So that tells us that it's positive in region number one. Okay, let's take a look at region number two. We're gonna let x equal positive one. So f double prime of positive one is gonna equal 12 times one squared minus 24 times one. So that's gonna give us 12 minus 24, which gives us negative 12, which is less than zero. So in region number two, we can see that it's gonna be less than zero, okay? And what I'll just do there is instead of writing the number, we're just gonna write that f prime of x so that we can see how that relates to our rules. Okay, and then in region number three, we're gonna pick x is equal to three. We know that's a negative, so we have f the second derivative of 3, so 12 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3. And so that's equal to, so this is 12 times 9, which is 108, minus 24 times 3, which is 72. And that gives us positive 36, which we know is greater than 0. So we know the second derivative here is going to be greater than 0. And so therefore it is positive there. Okay, so let's take a look at the definition of concavity. We know that if the second derivative is greater than zero, then it's gonna be concave up. If the second deri derivative, derivative is less than zero, then it's concave down. So therefore this is concave up, this is concave down, and this is concave up, okay? And so what does that tell us? Well, we also know that the values of zero and two are inflection points. So the inflection points are zero and two. So let's find out what zero is equal to when we plug it into our function. So we're gonna find f of zero so if we plug in f of zero, that's gonna be zero to the fourth minus four times zero cubed, which is equal to zero. So one of the inflection points is at zero, zero. And then we also wanna find the other inflection point at f of two. So two to the fourth power minus four times two to the third power gives us negative 16. So we have two negative 16. And I need to come back to step number six. 
because this is 3 to the 4th minus 4 times 3 to the 3rd. That gives us negative 27. So that should be 3, negative 27. Okay, so now that we have our inflection points, okay, we also know where it's concave up and concave down. Um, we know where our local minimum is, which is at 3, negative 27. There is not a local maximum or min at 0. So now we can go ahead and graph this with the information that we're given. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that so we can sketch this graph. Well, first and foremost, we know that we have an inflection point at 0, 0, and 2, negative 16. So here is our point 0, 0, and then 2, and then negative 16. Okay, so here we have 2 and then negative 16. Okay, and then what else do we know? We know that we have a local minimum, a local minimum at 3, negative 27. So we're going to go from 3 and then go all the way down to 27. So there is 3 and negative 27. Okay. So what do we know? Well, we know that it's going to be concave up here to zero. So what that tells us is, is that starting here on the left side of our graph, we should be heading down towards the value of zero, zero. Okay. And then what's going to happen is, is that then it's going to become concave down and then it's going to head towards the next inflection point. So that means now, as it goes through that point, you can see that it becomes concave down. Okay, as it goes through the 2, negative 16. Okay, and then it's going to be concave up again once we leave the part of 2 here. And we know that this is a minimum. So therefore, we're going to go through here and this is going to become a minimum value and then it's going to go all the way up to that particular point there okay so let's go ahead and check our graph on desmos to make sure that this matches okay now that we have desmos up let's go ahead and put in our function okay so our function is x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. Okay, so let's take a look at our graph here. So as you can see here at 0, 0, we can see that the function is coming down because it's going to be concave up. And then here it's concave down from 0 to the inflection point. So there is the inflection point at 2, negative 16. And then therefore it's going to be a minimum and it's going to go back up so it matches our graph. So recall that this and those right there are our inflection points. And this was our local minimum. 